getting into that 500 and up dollar per month net cash flow position, I think is going to become increasingly more difficult uh, with interest rates the way they are, purchase prices where they're at, and of course, ongoing investor competition of people who have been really active over the last 12 years that suddenly aren't able to really dive in as much now uh, because there's just fewer and fewer homes that will will produce. Uh, you know, and yet you've got these short-term rentals that are facing the same process. And I always look at short-term rentals with a safety net in mind and an exit strategy because what happens if the market turns and we see prices dip? You don't want to turn around and sell and lose, so you might end up with a long-term rental by accident versus a short-term rental by design. If an ordinance is suddenly in place and you're looking at what the long-term uh, backup plan would be and a tenant just doesn't produce enough in rental income for you to cash flow and now you're out of pocket every single month just waiting for the market to recover, that's not a really appealing strategy either. So you've got to sort of have these these sort of out of the box creative ways of getting a hold of the opportunities that are going to be there. But like I was saying, I mean, creative real estate is going to be crucial um, in coming months to years. And if you don't want to be sidelined, I mean, if you look back at the fact that we're seeing the worst housing affordability since 1989, According to the National Association of, Re Association of Realtors, the average existing single family sales price was $423,300 in June. And the median mortgage interest rate at that time was 5.6%. And a median household income at that point, combined joint income, median household income of 91,952. So just shy of 92K. In June of 1989, median existing single family prices were at 94,800 in contrast. Mortgage rates were actually 10.6% versus five and a half, and the median household income was just $34,128, according to NAR. So that means that the current average existing single family sales price is 4.6 times the current median household income, while it was 2.8 times the median household income in 1989. Uh, but when you factor in the difference of mortgage rates, the average home in 1989 cost approximately 30.7% of the median household income. But June of this year, it was 31.7%, very similar uh, across the board due to the fact that there was a 5% higher average interest rate in 1989. And that's how much of a difference that extra 5% can make in your costs of a property. Uh, and much of that, obviously, a much, much higher percentage of that going towards interest every single month. Unfortunately, it does appear that the Fed is gonna continue to push those interest rates higher, it sounds like. Um, they're, they're looking to curb inflation. Powell's been super upfront about that. So affordability actually might um, take an even bigger hit in coming months. It's inter it'll be interesting to see how this thing shakes out based on the prices coming down and rates going up, will it sort of even out across the board or are we gonna see prices sort of hold flat or continue to rise just at slower slower amounts? But final level of rates is, is still, still kind of seems to be unclear. Have you heard anything different than that? No, and you know, I'm, I'm reading a lot of that same stuff. There was those astronomical rates, obviously, within the last handful of months for, for good reason. I thought it was too little, too late. I went on record on multiple videos saying that, you know, we got up to 9.1% recently. We've dropped down into that, I think, around 8.5% inflation. But now we've got, you know, this new legislation being passed by the Biden administration, which is effectively dumping another trillion dollars into the economy. I think it's called the... Um, IRS Acceleration Act. Is that the name of the bill or is it the, uh, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act? I mean, ultimately what they're doing is, is putting 86 more, 86,000 more IRS workers uh, kind of on the case. So um, interesting to see what goes on with that. You kind of hit the nail on the head with why this is a great time for pink. This really is the perfect storm. So with tough banking restrictions, with higher interest rates right there, it's tough for John Q and Jane Q homeowner to you know walk into a Chase Bank or a Wells Fargo and get that traditional finance today for those exact reasons, um, or they don't want to go in and they don't want to lock in that high rate. The sellers are, are kind of suffering right now, even though we're not at you know the inventory we need. They're, those buyers that are not now in their pool of buyers for that particular house are obviously affecting and hurting the sale of their home, which is effectively causing price reductions. That's the only way that they're able to sell it. With the pink model, the benefit for the sellers, we're, we're bringing buyers in that can't 
qualify for traditional financing today. They make good money. Uh, they've got good stable jobs, a lot of self-employed. That's a huge demographic of buyer for us. Everyone that's watching this knows someone that makes money but can't walk into the bank. They've got good character. They can afford the monthly mortgage payments but they would get denied. So what we do is provide them with a platform to purchase a house through Pink Houses of America, then working with sellers that they want to sell their house. Right now, You know, they don't want to have a million price reductions. They still want to get at the top of the uh, market as far as value goes, even though they really did. I mean, in all honestly, they missed the mark. You know, people that were, you know, kind of waiting to see over the last handful of months how high their price value got. They didn't pull the trigger. Now they wish they did. Well, they still may want to sell their house and they still want to capitalize on really the, the high end of the sale of that house. So we can bring a buyer and we plug them into that house. They're making payments for a period of time to that seller. They're paying top market value. So sellers really maximizing the sale of the home and the buyer is not having to go to the bank today. We're working with them to help them get mortgage ready, mortgage qualified in a 12 to 24 month window of time while they're living in that house. And the advantage in that time is that in 12 or 24 months from now, we hope that rates have gone back down a little bit. So when they do go to get their permanent financing, you know, they're locking in something closer to that 3% range, hopefully. So it is a perfect storm for that. But we have built the perfect kind of safety net for both buyer and seller to really capitalize on the market. That's what's exciting for us. And that's what's exciting for our affiliates that we're working with across the country. Yeah, because obviously I think there is so much unpredictability of what's exactly going to happen next. Obviously, there's ways of using data points that we're discussing here today in order to make some predictions and anticipate what the market might do. But in the meantime, nobody really wants to be completely sidelined and not be able to get out there and remain active in order to generate additional revenues and continue to contribute positively to their net worth. And I think that's where Pink comes in. So let's go ahead and just give the email to people that are interested in reaching out to find out more about the Pink Houses opportunity. That is pink, like the color, at vipfinancialeducation.com, which is the full company name of this YouTube channel, vipfinancialeducation.com. Pink at vipfinancialeducation.com will be in the description for you guys below. But make sure you watch the videos down there too, because we are gonna go ahead and answer a lot of the questions that you might have about that opportunity. I just think it's becoming, again, one of the most spectacular ways of diversifying your ability to make money in this market. With that in mind, hey, Michael, I do appreciate all your insight once again on this. Always an interesting topic. We'll be sure to come back and hit you guys with updates as they're happening, because I'm sure there will be plenty just through this year alone much less in the coming years. So stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you're a subscriber if you're not one already. And also be sure to drop a thumbs up for us, please, if you don't mind. It helps us so much with the algorithm. And uh, until we see you on the next one, Michael, again, thank you so much. And uh, guys, make it a great day and keep on cash flowing. See you soon.